I'm sorry to say, Kitty, this isn't about you. I'm running down the Gary's garden. September 15th, a garden tour. Look how beautiful my garden is. Okay, I decided to skip my garden this time because I am going to do Gary's and he's gonna walk us through the garden so we can see what in the world is going on in this field of green. So, okay, so I don't know which direction you wanna go first. I'll I mean, follow you. I, I, I don't know where to go because I'm looking right now at, it looks like hundreds of dragon fruit flowers that are forming fruit. I see passion fruit up there. I, and your garden is so green. Which way would you like to go? Well, if we go over the dragon fruit, then I can explain what I did a couple of nights ago. Okay, so go past me and I'll follow you. Be aware of what's on the ground and what's above you because there's tripping hazards and there's things you can walk into. But this is my dragon fruit hedge and a couple of nights ago I pollinated 50 flowers and the night or two before that it was another 30, 40. So I've been pollinating a lot of these. I've been harvesting fruit so there's one fruit up there that I need to harvest. Now to get up high I have to use a ladder. I know it's ridiculous but if you don't let them grow tall you won't understand their growth habits and now I know their growth habits. So the dragon fruit, this will be a hedge they wrap around these steel posts and these steel posts get very hot so their aerial roots can handle the heat, so I know that. So I've learned a few things by growing them this way. I want to show this because we've got a whole bunch of eggplant too on this plant. Yeah, I've got a lot of small eggplant here. Some of them need to be harvested and some I've let turn yellow so I'll be able to collect the seeds from them. And this is a smaller variety and it's got a thin skin, so I like that variety. Moving right along, just ask me questions as we go. What is this? That is an apple tree. Oh, it's an apple tree. And I put it in when it was small, just, you know, I, I think it was a seedling. I just stuck it in the ground. I want to dig it up. It's not in an ideal spot. Right now, maybe I'll leave it. if it produces any decent fruit that's one thing or I could also graft onto it but I'm not sure whether I'll leave it there or not then on the other side here of course I've got my ponds which are difficult to see right now because the sweet potato is taken over and it's got duckweed on the surface all of my ponds are in pretty much in these raised beds I've got mosquito fish or gambusia in there to control the mosquitoes. I've got these pieces of bamboo here. I guess there's a couple of dragonflies moving in, but by midday this place is going to be covered in dragonflies and they're nesting or laying their eggs in the ponds. And yeah, this has been a really big year for the dragon fruit. So that we've had plenty of flowers, we've had quite a bit of fruit. So you can see the different stages. So this is one I pollinated last night, and this is one I pollinated a couple of nights ago. So this has already drooped down. And then there's a couple over here. The, this fruit isn't going to make it. It didn't really get pollinated, but that was from a week ago. And of course we've got bees buzzing all around us. You cleared all this? Yeah, I've been clearing out my tree collard. So I want to tidy things up. I trimmed that back. I've so got you got rid of your artichoke? The artichoke finished, so I cut it back and this is going to be next year's artichoke. I may actually dig it up and move it out into my other garden. And this area here I think I'll change up a bit. But my tree collard went to seed and it looked terrible maybe a month ago and now it's starting to come back. So that's the purple tree collard. I've got some green tree collard scattered through here too.
This is really my only tree that I've got growing in the main part of my garden. It's a lemon verbena and it doesn't seem to affect the plants around it. The long here is my passion fruit hedge. I've got two plants and every day I come in and I collect the fruit that have fallen. So all I have to do is wait for the fruit to fall. I don't have to climb up and harvest it. It drops to the ground. I come through, pick it up and it's good to go. So it's the bees that we have pollinate it, so I don't have to hand pollinate the passion fruit, which is a good thing. If I had to hand pollinate it, it wouldn't be so tall. I wouldn't be allowed to grow it that tall. And I see you've got some pepino growing through here too. The light white fruit is the pepino. Yeah, I've got a few pepinos. I've cut them back. Some of the plants started to die back a bit, so I've been trimming that. And I've been going through collecting a lot of compost. That's why it's fairly clear, and I haven't done any extra planting. You're making your own soil. Making my own soil, yes. And through here, I've started to clear the way on either side. I've got a lot of different things going on. I've got my turmeric around here still. More turmeric over there. This is another pond. After the rain, it's kind of gone a little weird. So I'll have to get in there and remove the algae. Some of the algae died and some of the plants died in there. The canna seeds, this is an edible canna. Canna, canna edulis, Queensland arrowroot or achira. It will grow from seed. And this is a really good hummingbird plant. I've got two colours. I've got the red that's flowering right now. And I also have a yellow in here somewhere. And getting back down to this end, I've got some sweet potato in this pond. So I've got this in a wicking bed. I've been using wicking beds for a number of years and this is one of my modified kiddie pools. So this has got sweet potato in there. I can see roots are forming because it's starting to bust through the surface. So I've never had to water this plant. It's getting the water from below. The totes have holes drilled in the sides and looking at this, this one's going to be a, the variety is going to be Korean purple. So they're just forming now. Yeah, it's got like a purplish skin and a white flesh, so that's Korean purple. I've got a number of different varieties of sweet potato. A lot of it is I use as a ground cover. I also train it up on the chain link fence so you can grow it vertically. Some varieties pr produce their tubers along the vine. Most of mine produce the tubers where it starts in the ground. So here's another one. This one's starting to regrow. And that's a yellow fleshed one. I can't, can't remember what variety this is. I'll, I'll remove these and I'll plant them elsewhere. Now, I don't want to walk on the other side because I've got bricks on the other side it's a tripping hazard but I've got my bananas along the back wall there I may start moving some out so that I can um, set up maybe some totes with peppers along the back wall I'm going to set the pond up a little different I'm growing some malanga or cocoa yam. So I've got that started this year. I'll get that going and I'll plant that over around that pond. It prefers a little bit of shade in our area. If it gets too much sun, the leaves tend to burn. I've We've got a lot of different varieties of bananas. 
This year, my ubes or purple yams didn't grow that well, so it's not going to be a big crop. They kind of started late because of our weather conditions, so now they're starting to grow, so I don't know. We've had a little bit of rain that might help them, but this year they're doing pretty poorly. The sweet potato, that's bomb proof. That's just taken off everywhere, so I'm not worried about the sweet potato. It can really handle the heat really well and drought conditions. This is just a field. How do you get in here to get anything? I just walk straight across it. I, I don't care. I know, I know where the tripping hazards are and I lift my feet so I don't trip on the vines. And at times I'll just cut a pathway through and I'll use the vines for compost. You can eat the leaves and you can eat the growing tips. It's very productive. It really does well to cover the ground and stop evaporation. Wow, it's just so green. It's turned into a real jungle. You've trimmed back all, a lot of your bananas, it looks like. Yeah, I've been trimming back my bananas. A lot of them have been hit by the cold and then the heat. So I, I hacked them back and I compost them in place. So I've got a banana circle situation going on with my bananas. I like to have them in a clump because that keeps the humidity in a little bit better in our zone. So we're in 10A Southern California. If we keep, keep moving, maybe we, we'll skip going down here, I don't know. I don't think you can. <laughs> Oh my god. I know how to walk through there. I see there. Malabar spinach. I'm not sure what some of this is. I think I saw fennel. I'm not sure what this is. If... Oh, that's my blueberries. Oh, it's your blueberries. Yeah, and they're doing well. I think the one over here has fruit on it. There's another one in here. I guess it doesn't have any more fruit. I mean, the birds could have taken it off if you didn't. Cat. I think the birds might have taken it off because it did have fruit on it. And then more Malabar spinach going up the rebar hooks. Yeah, they like the fall weather. Yeah. The Malabar I've got my, some black turmeric growing in these totes here and some ginger. I've got more turmeric around this side and more ginger around this side. I've got gin the ginger that I've got planted around this kiddie pool set setup is flowering. It's been in the ground for two years. That's so it flowered on the oh. other side and now this side's flowering. Okay, that's good because I've had some people ask about flowers. So this is the turmeric. That's flower. the turmeric. And so it's got a nice little pink tinge to the top there. But if I leave it in the ground for two years, it will flower. If I harvest it every year, I don't tend to get the flowers, so it's a biannual flowering plant. You've got buckets underneath all the... Yeah, I've got buckets in things. here. This is... Okay, this had carrots in it. The carrots are starting to come back. And it's got a bean in here. I will not know what type of bean that is until it starts producing. Oh, I think I see something. I'm, I think I see a grasshopper or a katydid. I mean, oh yeah, a katydid. A katydid. I mean, if that thing flies at me, my camera is going to go. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to move, but I have. Um, that's a katydid. That's a katydid. It's kind so of those hot. are the ones that have been singing all night. Yeah, they're the noisy ones here. Okay, don't disturb him because I don't want him flying at me. He'll come flying at me and I'll be flying somewhere else and my camera will be going in another direction. Yeah, that's a fig tree that I've been slowly removing. The figs have invasive roots, so I don't want them growing in my garden. I've 
We've got plenty of figs growing elsewhere. I just want to keep them out of the way. I guess you could get past the canners. You haven't found any rattlesnakes in here lately? No, I, okay. I've never seen a rattlesnake down here. I get gopher snakes okay, from time to time. Oh. No, I was going to... That's right, we're all walking through with you. No, I'm, I'm good, you can keep going. Well, here's a yacone flower. Oh, 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 oh. How beautiful. So, yacone's in the sunflower family and it's got their edible tubers un under the ground. So that, that's flowering there. Now, it stopped flowering. I wonder if it started because we got rain last week. Started to flower again. And here I've got my scarlet runner beans. I don't have any small ones, but it, it's still flowering. It's going to continue to flower. The large pods like this I harvest for dry beans. I like to let them dry on the plant as much as I can. And I think you get a better, more viable seed. That's just my opinion. That's just how I do it. And it's simple to harvest the beans. So I'm going to have a lot of beans for eating over the winter and I'll have some to replant next year. But these are two year old plants and if you leave if you can grow them as perennials, you leave them and the second year they grow back more vigorously so they're gone over the top. So I've got on this arbor here was the first arbor that I built. So I've got the rebar and the remesh to the rebar acts as a rib, the remesh is what everything's growing on. So I've, I've got passion fruit that's come in from the other side. These are Richmond apple cucumbers. I've left a couple for seeds for next year, so I'll let them go yellow. But we've been harvesting some of those. It's still flowering. Some of the fruit that it had didn't set right, so that turned yellow already. So some of the fruit didn't set correctly, probably around the time of the heat wave. So I've got a few scattered through that might make it. Oh, here's one that's going to make it. That's a small fruit. So that's a small fruit set near another one that is um, ripening and turning yellow. So some people think you have to remove the fruit, otherwise it'll stop producing. I don't fuss too much about that. It seems to work for me, so if it's not broke, I won't fix it. You have a big one down there too. Yeah. Turn around. Oh, that's... I hear birds singing. Wow, this is a real jungle. This is a jungle. So I've got an ube growing there. That's growing up the rebar, and that, that one actually is doing really good. Some of them I've got in tubs, some I've got them in, in the ground. And this is African potato mint. I've got a lot of that scattered around the yard. And then I've got a lot of purslane scattered around. The goldfinches are feeding heavily on that right now. And I've got my black cobra pepper here. And over here, it looks like it's purslane, but a lot of the plants in here, I've got a few different things going on. I've got a number of peppers scattered through here. More African potato mint in that one. Then the peppers that I've got in here are Fresnos. So these are the red Fresnos. They're hot, but they're kind of got a nice flavor to them and then I've got some orange bell peppers here that's got a little bit of sun scald but I've found that the purslane gives enough shade to the peppers and a lot of the peppers do well in a sort of partial shade so this wall gets warm gets very hot it reflects the heat down the purslane protects the peppers and then I've got some society garlic in here too. So that's just finished flowering and that's edible as well. So that's grown as an ornamental but it's edible. 
And we're back to here. I'm trying to think what we haven't covered. Probably haven't covered a lot. I've got my Eddos. I should have moved them when it got too hot. They're related to taro. They're like small taro. So these are my Eddos and they got affected by the heat. And they're in a bucket in a wicking pond too. So I've got a few different wicking pond sets set up. I've got my water chestnuts. These are the ones that I planted. I had some left over from what I brought inside over winter to eat, so I planted them back. And these are the ones that I left in the pond, overwintered them in the pond, and they came back really well. The issue I've had with the kitty pools now, these are two to three years old, and this one split down the side. So this is more of a bog setup. I just have to water it because it leaks. So I've changed from using straight kitty pools. I put black plastic sheeting over it. And the black plastic sheeting is cheaper than the buying a new kitty pool every couple of years. The black plastic sheeting lasts two or three years. So that's a little disposable. Then I started putting the concrete blocks on top of the black plastic sheeting and that does two things. I can step on the edge of the ponds and it's not going to break it. And it also protects the top of the ponds from the sun. So you can step on the edge like the rock I was going to show it because you were behind. Yeah, I can stepping. walk so the pond, The blue pond is under there. The blue pond is under this. And between the pond and the concrete blocks is black plastic sheeting. Sheeting protects... The pond acts as a mould or a form for the pond. The... Yeah, the kiddie pool acts as a form. It holds the shape. The black plastic sheeting is a liner. And then the concrete blocks protect the edges. So in other words, what I see here blue is actually behind you as well. Yep. Just covered. Oh, cool. So that's the original one. Out, out in my garden, I've got another one that I just used straight plastic sheeting. The black plastic sheeting lasts a couple of years. That protects the kiddie pool. That's a cheaper way of resolving the problem. But the concrete blocks are working out really well. So as I've moved through, I've learnt more and I've come up with better ways of managing things. And of course, you, where you're standing now, that's my strawberry patch. And I've got a few different things that come up that I wasn't expecting. The Malabar spinach comes up everywhere. And the Wandering Dew, I think, I brought that in with the strawberries. Oh. So that came in from Deborah's. So that, that came out of Deborah's garden. Where I got my strawberries from, I took them out of Deborah's garden because they took off. And it's a nice variety. I don't remember the variety, but it's got a nice flavour to it. They're a white berry with a real sweet flavour. Before you take this out, if you're going to compost, I want to grab that. That's a house plant. Yeah, that's why Somehow I... Somehow it got into Deborah's garden and it must have been perfect there. It's a little bleached out now, but I definitely want to make a, a nice planter out of that for well, myself. Normally I would just pull every weed that I can think of, but this is sow thistle and the goldfinches ate it. So I leave that for the goldfinches. And when this showed up, I left it because it's kind of got a nice little purple blue flower to it. That's beautiful. Deborah's my daughter. I call her Deborah, but it's actually Debbie. Gary's been getting a lot of strawberries from her, but I hadn't seen that. I hadn't noticed it when I came down here and that's good to know. I definitely will take cuttings off of that. And then I've, along here I've just got assorted mint in buckets. I've got my potatoes. This is where I grow my potatoes. Some of them are coming back again. So I've got my potatoes in totes. So I've got some. These ones are coming to the surface. They're a small variety of potato. I'm not going to eat those. I'm not worried about them getting into the sun. It's just started to chit a little bit. So I'll just plant this out somewhere. So that I like, these are my favorite potatoes, the small ones. 
you know, I can just grow three, four crops a year of these, just as they come up like that, plant them again. Oh, they're good. You've been cooking them with a little butter or just salt yep. or nothing. They're so good, skin and all, so there's no peeling. It's not like, how in the world do you peel? You do not peel those. This is beautiful. And you've got some, is this Thai mint? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's Thai mint. I also, I get quite a few things from Debbie. Okay, so and I got that's that from Debbie's from, garden too. Yep. My, my daughter wasn't going to garden, and then when the pandemic hit, my goodness, her husband was gardening. She took over with him, and they've got, no joke, you should check it out. I, I think she's got hundreds of totes. She does field trials on a lot of different varieties of something. So if she picks, picks a watermelon she won't just grow one variety she'll grow quite a few i i wouldn't want to say how many numbers of each variety because she's done a lot of trial testing with different variety to to see what grows the best and that's right. the way to go and she's done some melons this year is it the santa claus no it's one of them she wanted so bad and she tried in the shade sun semi-shade and she can't get it to grow so it just won't grow in her area but she's she probably will still try Wow. I think we've covered, well, we'll never cover everything because we'll remember afterwards, but we sure covered a lot in 30 minutes. And there's more outside. I did a little bit the other day. Um, we'll come back and do his, his tunnel. I think we can do that. We could step yeah, out and, oh, well, we can't. We're all twisted up here, so. Well, I can lift the... We can step out because I think we've gotten everything. Yeah, this, and, this was about the inside, my first garden really what this one yeah this garden yeah. tour but we can end it out here yeah. and then if they ask questions what they want to see specifically or just want to do another walkthrough again look at this i have to be careful because i'm getting snagged by dragon fruit no joke but you've extended what you've done is you were doing everything on the inside and now he's doing a lot on the outside too so you've kind of fenced out the deer yeah. Because what was going on on the inside, I've got shade, sun, shade, sun. It's got a canopy over it, and I wanted to grow more sun-loving plants, so I extended my garden out here, and this is where I'm going to grow uh, plants that require more sun. You know, you should have a garden party here. This is beautiful. But we'll come back and I'll explain the arbor a little bit more. We did a video the other day on it a short one a short one yeah because you didn't expect me to come down and we kind of did a walkthrough and that's up there i can put the link to that if you want to see it but yeah you'll have to explain how you did it next year now that you've got the setup because you just finally finished it this should be just a tunnel of food yeah and flowers when you're setting up a garden it takes a while and what i focused on this year was getting the totes together with the soil and that takes time you can't just rush out and do everything at once. You just do things in increments and eventually you get there. So this looked nothing like this five years ago. It didn't even look like this five months ago. Let's see, so that's where everything, my garden's way up there, which you are not getting a garden tour today. It looks the same, but yet you can almost see all the flowers up there he's been pollinating the dragon fruit and then there's the hummingbirds there so he's got his own little canyon and for the few people that said are you really married since you have your own gardens <laughs> yes we are for quite a long time but this keeps our marriage yeah. no it's just the truth is and we'll do a whole thing on it he actually i gardened back in the 80s here and it was very difficult and then we stopped gardening i see dragon fruit on the top and then he started to garden down here and this was a dead space literally nothing a dead but, barren space yes and then he decided he was going to garden here and he's gone through multiple multiple methods until he figured out what worked for him and then at the same time i started because i'm not hiking down here he built these stairs there's a whole thing ask questions if you want but this was a hike we had to go down the hill to come here so when he started this there was no stairway right? No, there's no stairway. So it was a hike, which you see me sometimes go down the trail. So I've got to go around through my garden and all the way down and then hike down. And so that's why I thought, no, I'm not coming down here. Not every day. And yes, I can come that way. But again, remember, there was no stairway. So you were sliding down the hill. 
but he's turned this in this paradise and it works better I think personally that he gets to do it the way he wants I don't come down here and mix in his garden because you're doing it your way yeah it's and you also plant different plants than me yeah that's true I'm I'm more into exotic odd plants and oh. and I, I want to try different plants if I find a new plant I want to experiment with it to see if we can grow it in Southern California because some of the plants that I grow people say I can't grow here and that's even after the garden tour that used to be mine I didn't want it and you took it yeah that's a curry plant it's not the it's it's it is a herb but it's not the curry for that you would think you know like curry curry it's just got a nice scent to it well, yeah. and it's got a nice yellow flower too but i bought that years ago but yeah. well that's his garden and we'll we'll come down here and do a whole thing or you can come down here and do a whole thing on how you built this and next year i would say this will be covered you could have probably taken some more of the cucumbers out but i know you've been kind of specific on what you wanted to grow in here because i had a lot of starts but you didn't want to put them in here this year maybe i should but <laughs> This is beautiful. Okay. So I think that's it for now. The sun's coming out and it's getting really warm again. So go for it, Gary. Well, with that, if you enjoyed this garden tour, please give it a thumbs up. And if you can, share it on the social media post. With that, thanks for watching. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <gasps> Is that for me to eat? Yes. Mmm. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Can't have a lot of that. Mmm. Mmm. From Gary's garden. Purple asparagus, ooh, she likes that.